Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart and today we're looking at Social Studies Book 3, Lesson 8. Whew. Okay, got that. Okay, Lesson 8. My fingers, oh, sometimes it's difficult. Okay, so in this unit you will discover where did early American settlers come from? Where did they come from when they came to America? And second, what are some early British colonies? That's what we're going to cover in today's lesson, but first we're going to go over the vocabulary. Our first word is journey. Journey is traveling to a place, especially at a long distance. So you might think, well, what's the difference between a journey and a trip, right? They're both similar. They took a trip, they took a journey, but a journey usually means a long trip and it's a difficult trip and you have many experiences on the way. So of course if you fly from Europe to America, that's just a trip. It's not really a journey. But if you get in a boat and you cross the ocean for many months, whew, that is a journey. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between journey and trip. Explorer is our next word. An explorer is a person who travels to an area, usually the first person to travel to that area, to learn about it, to discover a new land. But, you know, many explorers, when they have traveled, they come to lands, there's people already living there. So it's not like they discovered it. They discovered it for the people back home, right? The people in their home country don't know about this land. So they're kind of exploring that land for the knowledge of their own native people back home. Okay, but of course, in many places in the world, explorers would go to a new, a new area, but there were people already living there, okay? So they didn't really discover the land, but they did explore it for their home country. Okay, moving on. Adventure. Have you been on an adventure? An adventure is something that is exciting, usually interesting. Hopefully it's fun. Not always fun, but hopefully it's fun. Adventure has a positive meaning. So an adventure, remember the word journey? We talked about that before. A journey is a long trip, maybe a difficult trip. Well, an adventure is a journey or event with unknown danger. But usually we think of adventure in a fun or exciting way, like you take an adventure to uh, a camp or you take an adventure to the beach and some interesting things happen to you. But of course, when we read books about adventures of people a long time ago, they, ex they faced many dangers, but it was exciting and they survived. So it's an adventure or like an adventure story. Okay, like Peter Pan would be an adventure story. Okay, next. Colonist. Now, a colonist is a person. How do we know that? Because IST, whenever you have IST, you know that it's a type of person. It is a person who lives in a newly settled town. And really, a, col a colonist comes from the word colony, and colonies are when one country or one nation sends its own citizens to a foreign land and they make a town there, okay? It, that new land is not really part of the nation or the country where the people are coming from, but they're establishing, like they're, they're claiming that land as their own and they're sending their people to live there. And that is a colony. Of course, we don't, practice that anymore, thank goodness, okay? Um, because most of the areas are settled and people have rights to their own land. So we don't have colonies anymore, but a long time ago, hundreds of years ago, many countries would wanted to spread out and claim land around the world and they would send out colonists to populate their colonies. Okay. A settlement is a type of colony, right? A settlement is a small town in a new area, new area for the home country, right? So the home country would, uh, you know, they go out, they explore, they find new lands, and they create a small town. They would call that town a settlement. Okay, next word. Survive. 
To survive means to stay alive or to go on living. Now, of course, it's very easy to survive these days. We have many conveniences. But hundreds of years ago, people、uh, had difficult time, had a difficult time surviving. In places that were new to them, right? If they go to a new place and there aren't any towns or、uh, cities or things that they are familiar with, and they have to live in nature, well, then it's very difficult to survive. So, it survive is you know to try to endure difficult conditions and to continue living. Copper. Copper is a type of metal. There are many types of metal that are important to people. For example, copper is probably the the most common rare,、uh, co- most common valuable me- metal. Most common valuable. Well, it's probably tin, but copper is is maybe next to that, and then silver, gold, platinum. Right. So copper is relatively common, but You need to mine it, and it's a metal that we can use for many different things. Now, a long time ago, copper was a metal that well, it still is, but copper was used to make things like pots and uh, uh, pottery. It's still used. Copper is still used sometimes to make cooking pans, but usually, copper nowadays is used to make electrical wiring. Right? It's all it runs through all the wires to make light. And to give electricity into your home, so it's it's kind of red brown and it's relatively soft. If you take a knife and、uh, try to push it into copper, you will leave a mark. So it's a little bit of a soft metal, but it was very useful because it is a metal. Many metals, of course, are very useful to human beings. Okay, next. Lumber. Lumber is another type of resource. Metal is a resource. Lumber is a resource, but lumber comes from trees, right? If you cut down a tree and you cut the tree into very long parts, you have a very long piece of wood. It the standard size is two by four, two inches. By four inches. Sorry, I don't know the centimeters, but two by four. The, these are two by fours. And it just means two inches wide, four inches long, and that is a standard size for lumber that is used to build houses. Right, a wood that is cut up to be used, and usually we make houses out of lumber. Okay, those are our words for this lesson. Let's move on to the main ideas. One main idea is the settlers' roots to a new land, and. Like I said before, one of the things we're going to learn in this unit is where did American settlers come from? Well, this map shows that many early American settlers came from England. Right? England is over here. Right? Europe is this landmass here. Well, I cut off Italy. Sorry about that. But Italy, of course, is part of Europe, and so is Greece. <laughs> okay. Don't want to cut those countries out. So the most people in the Early days of American settlement. We're talking about you know sixteen, fifteen hundreds, more sixteen hundreds. Most of the settlements, settlers that came over from England、uh, to America. Of course, they were from England. Later on, a lot of Germans came over, and later on, of course, a lot of Amer-、uh, Europe, other European countries came over. But the very earliest settlements were from England. Now, I and they took a route. Now. This word here is interesting. Root. We pronounce it two different ways. Americans will pronounce it two different ways. Some Americans will say root, like the roots of plants. It rhymes with hoot, right? But sometimes Americans will say route, and、uh, I could spell it like that. Or just I'll, I'll do this route. So O W. It rhymes with shout. Okay, so both pronunciations are okay. Don't get confused about that. Some people will say root. What route did you take? Some people will say route. What which route did you take? Both are very common.、Uh, both are okay. They're very acceptable in American. Some Americans say root. Some Americans say route. Sometimes it depends on where they're from in America. But both are perfectly acceptable pronunciations. But be careful about spelling. Right? It's spelled R O U T E. Route. 
but many people pronounce it root. Okay, anyway, they came on over. Uh, this is the route that they took. They went through the Atlantic Ocean. It's a very took a very long journey. These are the ships that they came over in. Imagine being in a ship like that. It's a small ship. It's made of wood, and、uh, sailing for months across the Atlantic Ocean, you can't see any land. This is kind of primitive, right? It's all made of wood, and the ship moves like this for months. It makes some people sick to their stomach. This is a very difficult trip. That's why it's called a journey. It would be very difficult to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a ship like that. And then they would come to America, and they would make settlements, small towns. And some two of the earliest settlements by English、uh, settlers in America were, of course, Plymouth and Jamestown. So people from England built colonies called settlements, and that's a little bit of history for you. This is usually in the 1600s. 1600s. Oops, my S. Okay, there we go. Okay, good. Next, what are some English colonies? First of all, we have Jamestown Colony. Jamestown was the first successful settlement in North America. Successful. Right, because some other colonies were not successful. There's a famous story about a、uh, a colony called Roanoke, and the settlers went there and they settled the town. They called it Roanoke, and、uh, they settled there for a few years, and then you know people, some people went back to England and they came back with supplies to come back to the settlement. Everybody was gone. Where did they go? Nobody knows. Even to this day. They have no idea what happened to those people, so these settlements and establishing a colony was a very—it's kind of dangerous back then, right? It was very difficult for these people to come to a new land. They weren't familiar with the animals. They weren't familiar with the plants. It was difficult for them to survive in what they considered wilderness in nature. So, unfortunately, many people died, and in some cases, a whole settlement disappeared. Okay, so anyway, Jamestown was the first successful colony in North America for Britain, and、uh, Plymouth Colony was、uh, another famous colony in American history. The settlers who came to Plymouth County, and that was in Massachusetts,、uh, which is now a state in North America. It's it's on the northern part of the East Coast, above New York, Plymouth County. The settlers who went there were families of English. Pilgrims. Pilgrims are people who go on a journey for a religious purpose, and they sailed to North America for religious freedom. Now, of course, a lot of politics things were happening in England, and、uh, some groups, some religious groups in England, did not agree with the king, with the and the king's religion. So they had to run away, and many of them went to America to make their own colony, and they said they wanted to practice religious freedom. But the problem was, if you didn't agree with them, then you really had a hard time living in Plymouth. So interesting. But anyway, that was the idea. They sailed to North America for religious freedom. Okay, let's move on. Let's begin the reading、uh, section. And as usual, I'll read it out loud. Go ahead and read along with me to practice pronunciation, and we'll take note of the key vocabulary. In the reading passage. Okay, are you ready? Let's begin. The early Americans made a long and dangerous journey across the Atlantic Ocean to America. They were explorers, discovering a new land and trading with the Native Americans for copper and other materials. The life of the early Americans was a real adventure. They had to cut lumber to make their homes, and build their own furniture. Furniture, of course, is like beds, wardrobes, chairs, tables—all the things inside your house that you use and you can move around. Those things are called furniture. It's singular. Don't say furnitures, right? We say furniture. Okay. Every colonist came to America to find a better life. 
They lived in settlements called Jamestown and Plymouth, growing their own food and working together to survive. With the help of the Native American tribes, the first settlers were able to get the things they needed and learn about the new land. The lives of the first settlers in America were very hard at first, but by working together and helping each other, they made a happy new life. Okay, and like I said before, these settlers, they came to a new land, but it wasn't new for the Native American tribes. There were many people already living in America, and they were different groups. We called those groups tribes, Native American tribes, and we talked about them in a previous lesson. Okay, good. How is this reading organized? Let's take a look at the reading skill. So here we have the main idea and details. What is the main idea of this passage? Well, as we saw, the life of the early Americans was a real what? Remember when you have an experience, it's usually a new experience. It can have many dangers in it, but we usually think of it as a positive word. It's something new, something that's not ordinary, and it's filled with uh, interesting experiences. Some of them dangerous, some of them can be fun too. So we call that an adventure. So the life of the early Americans was a real adventure. A real adventure. Okay. They. Who is they? Well, they, of course, supports the main idea of the early Americans. The early Americans. That's they. They. They beep. <laughs> they beep with Native Americans for copper and other materials. Materials here, you, we can also say re, whoops, sorry, R, resources. Resources. Re natural resources. Natural resources are the materials you get from nature that you use for something. Like I said, uh, people use copper to make pots, cooking pans, things like that, and other materials to make homes and furniture. Uh, these are resources. Now, how did they get them, right? The Native Americans had a lot of them. The colonists, they had other things. They had things like uh, guns. The Native Americans liked beads or jewelry, and so they would trade. So they traded with the Native Americans. That's when you exchange one good for another good. I have something you want, you have something I want. So we trade, okay? So we traded. They traded with the Native Americans. Okay, good. And trade, of course, was very important for both economies, of the Native Americans and for the English as well. Next, they had to cut beep to make their homes. What did I talk about before? And I said I made a point of saying what the dimensions, two by four. What were we talking about in that section? Well, of course, we were talking about lumber, right? You cut down a tree and you make lumber out of it, and that's how they build their homes. They built their homes. They had to cut lumber to make their homes. They didn't just make their homes out of wood. They also made what? Chairs, desks. Well, I don't know if they made desks, but tables, uh, beds, dressers, desks, why not? They had to study. Okay, so they, what, what, what do we call all those things? We call those things furniture. And before I said singular, it's really non-count. It's a non-count noun, so don't say furniture, it's furniture. It's kind of like a collective noun. Furniture. Furniture. So they build their own furniture. Can you build your own furniture? That's kind of cool if you can. If you can learn how to use wood or, or yeah, use wood to, to make a chair or to make a table, that'd be something cool, huh? Okay, maybe in school. Okay, next. They lived in beep called Jamestown and Plymouth. So what did we call Jamestown and Plymouth? Yes, they were colonies, but what's another word for colonies that we talked about in this lesson? We use the word settlements. So they lived in settlements. Settlements called Jamestown and, and, and Plymouth, called Jamestown and Plymouth. Of course, you could also say they lived in colonies. It's, it's basically the same idea. Whoops, colonies plural s 
Okay, so they lived in settlements or they lived in colonies called Jamestown and Plymouth. Okay, so that's a little bit of history for you, a little bit of history about the early American uh, history. And of course, it wasn't really called, they, they weren't called Americans at that time. They were British subjects. So they were English, okay? America came much later, okay? So a little bit of history for you. Okay, I hope you learned a lot, especially about uh, some important vocabulary. Not just history, but of course, we're focusing on vocabulary and English usage. So thank you very much for studying with me, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.